this ends today, you know, like mm -hmm. not dealing with this anymore. And I had called my buddy who's a construction worker and I was like, what's the best way you've seen somebody cut their finger off? Cause he's in construction. He's seen it a bunch or something. <laughs> I, that was the thought that was going through my head. I was like, if anybody knows how to cut a finger off, this guy does. <laughs> a big shout out goes to Max's tires, Jensen USA and Fox shocks for supporting the inside line. Welcome mountain bikers. I like, yeah. And I was dealing with my finger falling off and all that. Yeah. So what, like, tell that story. Uh, I had a tumor and so I had it in high school. And so there's two arteries in your finger mm -hmm. and I had a tumor in one artery in high school. So they cut the tumor out and cr uh, clamped each side and then it grew back. And so they were like, well, this is after years of like running it. Cause I, after they cut my finger off, when I went to the, when I was in post-surgery, I had a memory and I remember going to a doctor's appointment where the doctor told me that they were going to cut my finger off. But this was like seven years before. Hmm. And I had just compartmentalized it and was like, no, nah, sorry, bro. Like, peace out. Uh, See you on the other side. Like, uh, you're not cutting my finger off. Like, that'll never happen. And then I went through, yeah, all that, like. I was on Medi-Cal, so I was going to like a ton of doctors and appointments were getting messed up and it was just getting extended to where I was in so much pain because it was at a point, the tip of my finger had turned black, okay. like gangrenous. Yeah. And it's your index finger. Yeah. Okay. My index finger. Yeah. And it had turned black and gotten fully gangrenous. So it was basically like falling off. Right. Yeah. And I got the final surgery or if the final doctor I got to this guy, Dr. Dow, I kind of hate him. He's kind of a prick, but he was a good <laughs> surgeon. <laughs> That's what counts. But he put the he put the MRI up on the thing, dude. I'll never forget it. And he looked at it, and he kind of like did a double take, and he just walked over to me and he pointed out my hand. And he said, "Do you want your finger cut off here or here?" And pointed out my knuckle and pointed out like halfway down my metacarpal. Dude, that's what he said to me. You want your finger cut off here or here? And I was like, I don't know. Can I go home and Google it, dude? Like, yeah a big decision <laughs> <laughs> huge huge decision for me to make here on the spot guy you know he's like all right set another appointment up and we can do it this is wild you want to hear a wild one yeah all right <laughs> this is a classic one okay. so i'm in like excruciating pain like the nerve is out in the air like imagine like your tooth broken but it's on the tip of my finger right Jeez. and my legs are shaking at night i can't i haven't slept in i looked like a junkie right probably so I go to the, just because of all the pain that you're dealing with in your, pain. yeah, I was just dealing with just an incredible amount of pain at all times, like nonstop. It was like thro it was throbbing and like just horrible. Mm. And I, I go to the doctor and I'm like, all right, I want you to cut it off the metacarpal. Like he goes, okay, we'll, we'll set the surgery up for three weeks from now. And I was like, can't wait three weeks, dude. You gotta like, that's too long. Like mm. I can't do it. Like I, I physically can't make it three more weeks. I'm in too much pain. And how old are you? This was 2018. Okay. So then he's like, well, I asked him, I'm like, can I have some pain meds? Cause I hadn't taken any, right. Cause I was not going to take any pain medicine. That was my whole thing, right? I'm not going to take pain meds. I'm not going to become a junkie. Yep. Cause I would have for sure became dependent on it. Cause when I had one, I was like, Oh my God. Like, <laughs> you know, like I can make like, sure, yeah. yeah, you know? But he, he goes, no, we're not going to give you any medicine. Like, you're a junkie. And I was just like, I lost it. Like, lost it. And I grabbed him by the shirt and slammed him up against the wall. And I was like, you're in the healthcare industry. You don't care about people. And just like, no. yeah, like and this little tiny dude, Dr. Dow. And I had him like up against the wall. And I could see like fear in his eyes. And then that's when I like kind of snapped out of it a little bit. Yeah. And I was like, this ends today. And I was like kicked my way out of the door and <laughs> there's this poor lady that was setting up all the appointments named Carla and I blow the door down. And I'm like, who is Carla? Like, and the, all these ladies at the desk, like look at this lady, Carla. And I was like, I hope sometime in your life you suffer. You know, like I was losing my mind. Right. I was totally crazy. Like yeah, absolutely yeah. lost my mind at this point in time. Right. Because of just the perpetual issues with the nerve on your finger perpetual pain yeah non-stop pain for seven years you know like Jeez. and it had progressively gotten worse in that year i had done rampage like that's what midge said he's like that landing killed your finger man he's like that's where that was the end of it because i packed this one big landing yeah. like all day long 
And that was when my finger was like, all right, we're tapping out here, dude. And that was October, right? So then I got it cut off in March. So I did like from October to March was like excruciating pain. And uh, you never got pain meds for it? No. And I was like sleeping like an hour or two a night and I was mowing lawns then because like I'd gotten to a point where I couldn't feel creative anymore. Like I couldn't, I'd sit at the computer and my hand would throb and I'd try to edit and I was just like, couldn't like I couldn't because when you're being creative you need your mind there and you need to be able to like come up with ideas and do things and I just physically couldn't so I was like I and I convinced myself that I didn't want to do it anymore I hated filming I hated mountain biking I never wanted to ride again mm -hmm. like I just had convinced because I couldn't right so then I had to convince myself that I didn't want to and then so I started mowing lawns with this dude Jimmy Breen who's I knew from growing up racing BMX mm -hmm. And I, there was one day I was mowing this lawn and it was cold out. It was like January and I was just crying, pushing the mower, just crying. And, and like this, for this Mexican dude, this fool just stared at me and he's like, you good fool. And I was like, no, man, I'm not. And I just kept mowing. Like, oh, man, really? <laughs> yeah. One day I hit my finger on the blower and passed out. Just cause the pain was so big. Yeah. My legs gave out and I woke up like on my back. And then Jimmy was like, dude, you're purple, bro. We got to like, you, we got to go home. Like you need to go to the doctor. Like you need to get that thing sorted out. And so when was that compared to getting it sorted out? Like three or four months before. Jeez. Yeah. So that, so that day after I blew out of the doctor, I was like, this ends today, you know, like mm -hmm. not dealing with this anymore. And I had called my buddy who's a construction worker. And I was like, what's the best way you've seen somebody cut their finger off. <laughs> really? What? <laughs> like because he's in construction he's seen it a bunch or something i that was the thought that was going through my head i was like if anybody knows how to cut a finger off this guy does you know like oh my <laughs> so I, I walked from the doctors to my parents like pumping myself up like just follow through just follow i'll never forget like this walk right like it was an insane walk i was like if you follow through like you'll be all good if you if you wuss out and you don't follow through like you're going to bleed out and die, you know, like, and I was just like, and you got to stick it in a frying pan or something after, like, I was like fully like ready to cut this thing off. Got the chop like, saw out. You're thinking like you're going to cut your own finger off. Yeah. I got the chop saw out. I had the chop saw out at my parents' house. It was like plugged in. I was ready to do it. I'm, Shut up. I swear to God, dude. And my wife came cause she was at the doctor when I had the explosion and she knew like where I, where I was going, I guess, you know, like, and she got to my parents' house and she's like, she knew I was like irate and like insane and lost my mind. And I like, there was no talking me out of it. Like I was going to cut my finger off. Mm -hmm. So then she's like, well, I have the kids and I can't drive you to the hospital right now. So like, let me call your dad and he'll come drive you to the hospital. And I was like, yeah, yeah, good idea. I call my dad. I'm like, Hey dad, can you come? Like, I'm going to cut my finger off and I need to ride to the hospital. And he's like, you're going to do what bro? Like, Shut up. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, nah, dude, like just wait for me. I'll come like deal with it. And then he went to the doctor's office and like laid into the guys like this kid's at the house. like going to cut his finger off, dude. Like you need to set this surgery up. Yeah. And the doctor's like, yeah, if he comes in and apologizes to me, then I'll set it up at a better date or something, you know? So I, then after it, my dad came home and talked me off the ledge of cutting my finger off, you know? So then they made me go. Plus, dude, I don't know a lot about that stuff. Like, <laughs> wouldn't a chop saw be a pretty dirty ass cut compared to like something sharp and straight? <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I thought about doing it with loppers, but that would like yeah. crush it. Yeah. And uh, like my I, my buddy was like, I think chop saw, dude. Like, and he was like, are, You're not gonna do that, are you? And I was oh just like, goodness. I might, you know, like don't oh. don't test me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and the, when I was at the, the hospital getting the surgery the lady's like you almost did what and i was like yeah she's like you'd have bled out dude like when we cut into it it yeah. just squirted because it was so much pressure built up because it was trying to push wow really yeah and the yeah, tumor yeah. was stopping all like all blood flow and yep. it was so much pressure she's like you'd have bled out in five minutes like mm. you had no chance for you to cut that thing off yeah i'm glad you didn't <laughs> still that's insane and so like when you have the surgery was like was it freedom to not have it there Did oh it felt funny? so good like, yeah oh man i got out of the surgery and i was like sitting in the post-op and i was just like it just felt like a weight off my shoulders mm. like and uh, there's like obviously pain but it was like a different kind of pain 
And I was like, I love this pain. This feels great. Like yeah. it feels like it's scratching an itch, you know, like it was gnarly. And then, <laughs> then I had one post-op appointment. That's all I got with Medi-Cal, right? No, no physical therapy, nothing, just one post-op. And the doctor's like, Oh, I did such a good job, you know, blah, 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 like <laughs> playing God. And he's like, you know, like you never know what people are going through. Uh, my wife had a minor surgery that day. And, you know, you never know what people are going through. I'm like, you didn't know what I was going through, bro. Like, <laughs> For real. So, like, when he's like, do you want to cut off here or here? Like, he had a rough day. And he's talking about, like, your finger that's destroying yeah. your life. <laughs> and then he's like, this is what, hey, this is the kicker. He goes, you know, I've been getting a lot of bad Yelp reviews. And I was just hoping you could leave a good one for me. No way. I'm like, dude, no if way. I start typing, it's not going to be good. <laughs> Like, you don't want me to type, dude. Just... And now you know this for the internet. It's forever. It's not just for a couple of people, right? Yeah. <laughs> dude, that's nuts. Wild situation. Yeah, does it, like, are you used to it not being gone? I guess it's not like, hey, I had all four fingers, like, fully functional, and then one day one's gone. Like, it's, it was a Yeah, there was, de like, there was definitely a period of time where I just didn't use it, and so I was, like, sort of used to it but there's like so many things in life that you don't realize you use your index finger for like putting your hand in your pocket like mm -hmm. you open your pocket with your index finger like when you reach for a car door you, your index finger is the first one to grab it like i would reach for a car door and almost fall down you know like wow, crazy, yeah like yeah. just weird stuff that like and it it irked me like it it's really hard to deal with like that whole situation like i couldn't imagine a leg or like an arm yeah. or something because you could i can feel my finger right now we're talking about it it feels mm -hmm. like it's there and it feels like it's stuck like a raptor claw or something you know interesting like it's, the nerve however it's yeah they added. tied the nerve to the other bone so it just feels like it's like stuck like this huh. like all the time yeah yeah and it kind of and when we talk about it it feels like like pinocchio's nose or something like i i can feel it growing when i'm not talking about it or thinking about it i don't feel it but as soon as we start talking about it, it's like grows and comes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to like no. <laughs> make it feel weird. No, no, it's fine. I don't, I've dealt with it enough now. Yeah. And like now I've gotten so used to it and I can ride my bike again and like just all like riding, riding was, I was really, really scared to ride because my index finger is my front brake. Right. Yeah. And I had braked with that finger my entire life. So I was like, how am I going to relearn holding on with only two fingers now? Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize how much weight you put on your palm, like on not your palm, like the top of your palm, like mm -hmm. on your bottom of your finger. So the first, like, I just decided I was like, okay, I'm going to learn how to ride my bike again. Cause I can't, like, I literally can't do it when I try to ride. I couldn't manual. I couldn't bunny hop. I couldn't do anything. My hand was like not strong, you know? So I was like, how did I learn how to ride a bike? I rode curbs and I jumped curbs. So I, hucker gave me a bmx bike and i just started jumping curbs really and like manually curbs and i would get arm pump riding like 100 yards down the street and then i just because the grip is so different yeah just trying to hold on to it and then so i rode like that for like a year before i and then the first time i ever rode a mountain bike again was that yamaha thing you had me do wow really i didn't know that yeah it was like a life-changing moment no way yeah huh well, cool. Yeah, Glad I could help out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, you know, no, you helped out more than you ever know. Like uh, when I went to that thing, I didn't even know if I could even ride a bike. Yeah, I was like, I have no idea if I can do this. And for like probably a year or so, I would think about it as I was coming down the trail, and I would have to take my hand off the brake and to hold on. Mm -hmm. And then when I'd have to come into corners, I'd have to take my finger off and brake. But now I my hands and stuff are strong enough that I can actually ride and keep my fingers on the brakes wow. and not think about it. Like, yeah, it feels good. Huh? Dude, that's dope. You've adapted. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be hot in LA. You know, this is coming, right? Like this is the next plastic surgery. What do you, <laughs> this is the next big lips. 